Parks, president of Heartland Truly Moving Pictures, and I want to thank you all for joining us in this very special event this evening. I was uh, as moved as I know you were by this film. It is indeed a truly moving picture. Uh, and when we first saw this film, we, we had uh, a person who said, as he looked around the room, as we discussed and wrestled with this film, as I know all of you are doing tonight, that the hope is in this room. The hope is with you all tonight as you see this film. Uh, so, without further ado, uh, let's introduce our moderator for this evening, who will introduce our very special guest. Uh, we're thrilled in Indiana, which is where we're originating from, Indianapolis, Indiana, to have a very special Hoosier, uh, the guy who defined what Hoosier is in a film by that same title. Would you help me welcome the writer, director, the, excuse me, the writer, producer, and of not only Hoosiers, but Rudy, Mr. Angelo Pizzo. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce the uh, brilliant man behind this amazing movie. First of all, um, the author of the original novel, novel John Boyne. John. The screenwriter and director, Mark Herman. Uh, 
Um, I took it on, but there were a lot of challenges in there. Um, and I was, I, at the time, I just fancied some, some challenges. But there were actually more challenges than I thought at the time. Um, you know, on top of the subject matter and the ending, that uh, it's actually quite a difficult adaptation. And, um, and it's also, you know, working with kids is quite a challenge as well. I was going to get to that in a second, but in terms of the translation uh, from novel to screenplay, and ultimately the film that you envisioned, what were some of those challenges, other than the obvious subject matter? Well, um, everything was very um, magical about the book. A lot of the things that are very magical about the book are actually things that would actually complicate it as a film, uh, or jeopardize it in a way. I mean, some of the scenes in the book, the maybe 70% of the book is, is the two kids of the family, uh, which works tremendously well in the book, but on screen I don't think it works so well, so I had to cut those back and create, uh, create a space for something else, and that was actually the, the development of the, the development of the family relationship, which, um, you know, as John says in the book, it's all entirely in Bruno's head, but in the film, it's still very much from his perspective, but you do see glimpses of life outside the work. How did the two of you work together? Did you trans? Did you pass drafts to him? Did he um, make, give you ideas and notes? Or did, uh, did you have an established relationship, a working relationship? I, I did a film called uh, Brassed Off, which was then uh, um, adapted to the stage. So, so I know how it feels to hand over your baby to somebody else. Um, so um, there was once an author who saw this film, I think it doesn't really have any. But, uh, but that, like I say, it was very important to me that we had John's approval and support. Uh, so I would send him uh, every draft really, just to get his reaction and to try and get that support. And, and, and the fact that he supported it all the way through to now was not coming out. It was, uh, it, was very, it was quite rare in the industry, I think, but authors have survived this long. <laughs> Talk about the uh, the challenges of working with the uh, two young boys, who, by the way, are absolutely brilliant. And how did you find them? Uh, it was a very long the casting process, really. We saw hundreds and hundreds of kids. Um, and the producer of this film also produces the Harry Potter film. So the audition queues got even, even longer. Um, yeah, they used to put a little bit later in there, and he was on the first tape I saw, and uh, I just thought there was something very special about that kid. It, 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 it wasn't an audition or a reading, it was just him chatting. Uh, it was just his eyes and his expressions I thought were fantastic. I thought he'd get him on the big screen. He's going to listen to something very special. So we kept on bringing him back to various auditions, and then eventually cast him, and then matched him up with several possible schools. And uh, it's just the question of choosing the ones that have the right chemistry, and that was that with Jack. As far as working with them, um, I mean, I've discovered, I've discovered there's a big difference between being a parent and being a film director. Um, you know, when you're a film director, you ask the kids to do something, they actually do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and, and uh, the thing about Asa, actually, uh, especially Asa, um, I found that if, they, if he was sort of over directed him, he overacted, or if he directed him at all, really, uh, he, he tended to overact. So very early on, I realized, you know, the scene like when he's looking through the uh, through the gateway, the open gate, I would say to Asa, you know, look through the open gate and imagine your friend Schnoor's beyond the woods, he hasn't been for three weeks, and you haven't seen him for two weeks. And we desperately want to see him. And we do a take. And he just overdid it, so then from then on I would just say, just look at the gate. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my overall directing technique. <laughs>